everyone in the room doesn't necessarily have to have it. Now, if we, if both you and I are having a conversation and we're coming from the conscious conversation arena, then I can see where the flow would be easy or less confrontational or anger or fights or whatever. Because um, I had a similar situation um, just this week and I did use the words that you just used. I agree to disagree. And that was my way of trying to shut it down because um, I understood we had, you know, spoke back and forth and I understood where that person was coming from and I explained why I thought the way I, I thought, but you saw there was a stalemate. So neither party was going to, I guess, give. So I, I used those words, I agreed to disagree. And you're saying that we should just kind of stop. Well, let me ask you a question. Did you understand them? I, yeah, I understood what they were saying. You understood what they were saying? Um, and I totally disagreed. But, I, I totally disagreed with what they were saying. Because uh, um, they made an analogy that no matter how they put it, I was just like, no, that's just not common sense or whatever. Um, and it's a younger individual, not that that's always correct. Younger people can definitely show us a few things too, but um, I was just thinking um, that's a way of walking away and saying, you know, I'm not 100% where you are, but you haven't won, won me over with what you said, so let's agree that we don't agree on this particular topic, but we're not gonna get anywhere by continuing maybe a two-day dialogue mm -hmm. trying to get you where I am at that time. Because I do um, agree that we're all on different levels and where um, we're gonna understand or know things is gonna change over a period of time. And you're right, it could be that what that person was saying five years from now, I'll say, oh, I get it. But at this point in time, I had to agree that, no, I'm not there yet. So the agree to disagree is, is, is always very interesting. This is not necessarily the truth. This is just my perspective based on my own limited understanding of things. Usually when we agree to disagree, we just want to let a person know, I'd still disagree with you, but let's stop talking. That's what it really means. What a lot of times when people say that. And I understand that traditional approach. But I'm trying to separate that from a conscious conversation. So in a conscious conversation, I don't have to announce that I disagree with you by saying, let's just agree to disagree. I, I don't have to do that. All I have to do is say, I, OK, I understand, and leave it. And, and I know how difficult that is, because that's not how we used to doing things. But at the end of the day, even when we make the announcement, I vehemently disagree with you. OK. What? Why? Now, if I've already explained why I feel differently, then the disagreement just doesn't matter anymore. What matters is, OK, I understand where you are now. I understand what you're saying. Is there anything about what I said that you didn't understand? Well, I understand you. I just don't agree. That's okay, see, because I'm still, I'm going to have a conscious conversation. If you insist on saying you don't agree, that's on you, that's cool. But I don't have to, I know you disagree with me. I don't disagree with you because I don't have to. I understand where you're coming from, and that's all that matters. Well, for me, one of my favorite things to say is tell me a little bit more about that. Mm -hmm. And if I don't agree with you, I would say I hear you. And that's how I end a conversation. I want to say, I think we're spending a lot of time on the guidelines, mm -hmm. um, but if we just, if we could move forward with guideline number six in mind, with the mindset that if I agree or don't agree, what you say is right, and I'm trying to get an understanding on what you say being right. Next person, I'm listening with the intent to understand what you're saying is right. The next person, I'm listening 
with the mindset to understand what you're saying is right. I'm not focused on anything else other than hearing what's coming out the person's mouth with the mindset that what is coming out this person's mouth is right, then I think, and I like, because it is a mental shift, because we, we're not used to listening to people with that mindset that everything that's about to come out this person's mouth is right. We're, we're already on guard. We're trying to negate what they're saying. And so I think if we put this guideline in play on moving forward, that everything that's going to come out the person's mouth is right, then we don't need to disagree. We don't need to agree to disagree. We're like, everything that's coming out of everybody's mouth is right. Right? <laughs> and, 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 and a conscious conversation. <laughs> In a conscious that's conversation. Before, right, right. right. So, but that's why I, I like to establish that in a conscious conversation. Because what happens is sometimes it get blendy blendy. It's like, well, we kind of veer back to when, when I'm having a conversation, and then I have to say, no, make, we talking about in a conscious conversation. I think it would be helpful mm -hmm. when a person is going off track like that mm -hmm. if we can re revert them back to number six. Well, actually, the reversion is back to number one. The mind is like a fingerprint. There's a reason why we see things differently. Yes. I think I, I don't want to get too more, much more into the guidelines, OK? But I do have a question. I do have a question. And can you legitimately have a conscious conversation when the person you're communicating with does not have these rules? Absolutely. Because I feel like it would be one-sided. And I'll give you an example. Earlier today, someone said something to me. And my response was, OK. And they said, OK. <laughs> what do you mean, OK? Like they were waiting for a rebuttal or engagement or you know, some kind of a challenge. And I just went, OK. Because I, my mind was like, I hear you. That's your opinion. That's how you feel. I'm, I'm OK with that. And they were trying to pull it into what we're trying to avoid. So I'm wondering, if I don't lay out the ground rules for the people I'm communicating with, can I truly have a interactive, conscious co conversation? Absolutely. By myself? Absolutely. Okay. Because either you can, have a, you can choose to have a conscious conversation, or you can choose to do the traditional thing and argue and fight and agree and disagree. At minimum, I can have a conscious conversation. Now, if I'm talking to somebody that's interested in having one and understanding the, the little guidelines and let's have a true interaction, and, and that will help when the book is out because then you can say, hey, this is another approach to having a conversation. Um, that's different, but we, we, we can always have a conscious conversation. It doesn't matter who, because I'm not, if, if you have a problem with me saying, okay, I understand, then that means you want me to fight. <laughs> that, that's, no, I'm not going to do that. Right. You know, and it's OK. And, and the, uh, the, uh, the interesting thing is they'll think about that afterwards. Like, what was that about? I don't, you know, and and they'll, they'll have to work it out. But we have the choice all times to have a conscious conversation. So what I wanted to put on the table today, and I, I, I needed some answers. Now, I'm not, this is like a handout that I would like for people to leave with. You know, I have my two books for sale, my deck of cards for sale, or whatever. But I just wanted somebody to, I, I wanted you all to leave with something that represents my thoughts that you don't have to pay for, and uh, that, that shows that I appreciate that you came. And, um, and then I, um, I always had this thing. Sometimes in life, you pick up things along the way, and you say, if I ever do something like that, I am not doing that. And I remember I used to go to these workshops and seminars, and people would give me a staple thing of handouts. And you could see half of them have been printed 50,000 times, and they fade, and then they crooked on the page, and just any old kind of way. And so I said, well, if I give handouts, let me give them out a certain way. So this is what this is. We're not going to go through this book or anything. I might reference something in it. 
but it's just for you and to show my appreciation and then also to use those last two pages to take notes if you want to say something.